Hi folks, Giles Reeves here from Salag Audio. Today I'm doing a quick tutorial showing you how I set levels in Reason. The technique I use is called using a consistent peak reference level. And I use a peak level instead of an average level because it's the peaks that clip. And one of the things I'm trying to do with this technique is keep the output from clipping. And of course, if it is clipping, you can do any number of things to fix it, but if you can avoid it in the first place, you can spend more time mixing and less time fixing. Let's just jump right in and show you the track. It's a track I used in a coloring EQ tutorial you may have heard before. I won't play a whole lot of it now because you'll hear enough of it before this is over. I've got the master compressor off. I've got my ozone maximizer off. So what we're seeing now is just the levels coming out of the mixer raw. My target is minus six to minus three. There was a minus six, so we're right on target. Let me play a little more and show you the variation that you're gonna typically see. Minus five, minus eight, minus five. That's right where we want to see it. Oh, there's minus three. Still safe. That was just one minus three in the whole first part of the song. So we're right where we want to be. We're between minus six and minus three on average. And Let's see, faders, there's plenty of faders that are pulled down and the master fader is at zero. A lot of the faders are at zero. So I've lowered things that were too loud in terms of level. So two things that make our peak reference level work. One is that not all tracks always play at the same time, typically. And two is that you lower the level of a lot of tracks. So all the ones that are lowered are coming in at minus 12 but they're going to be lowered in the mixer so between those two things and the amount of headroom that we've left we are still very safe on our output levels without doing anything to the mix bus uh, let me just give you a quick run through here you can see that the levels are hitting around minus 12 on all the tracks some are lower and they don't hit minus 12 all the time. Some may go a few dB over. I don't know. Let's just scan through. Here's a drum loop. Minus 15, minus 16. Here's a percussion loop. Minus 12. Here's the bass track. Minus 14. Minus 13. Here's all my percussion. Now this is a mix, uh, a bus rather, of all the percussion, but it was recorded as audio and then normalized to zero and then pulled down minus 12 just to keep levels uh, at a known and easy to, to, to follow place. Let's go back to the top. I have a pad, simple, also hitting at minus 12. My little balafon's hitting at minus 13. Let's check out the flutes and the other instruments. Now, they are well below 12, but they're fine at that level. They, they, they're loud enough, so there's no reason to, you know, max them out for no, for no reason. That's just the level that they came in at, and I left them there. Okay, let's zoom up to the horns. Minus 15, minus 13. So, one of the things to note is watch how low the average levels are. Now, as a general rule, average 
levels are always lower than peak levels or instantaneous levels. But you'll never see an average level higher than a peak level because that's mathematically impossible. So when we see our low levels here in the mixer, it's nothing to worry about. The ones we're looking at are over here on the master fader and then uh, on my peak hold meter here on the output of the mixer. But let me just show you that really quick. I have not discussed how that works yet. So our output from the mixer, the master out, instead of going to the hardware interface, it goes through a cell again and an ozone and then to the hardware interface. And this allows me to um, use my insert for my sidechain filter. I'm almost always using the sidechain filter on the master compressor these days, which leads me naturally to the master compressor. Let's split the screen here and show you once I kick this on what happens hopefully nothing <laughs> to the levels all right same levels on the mixer that's fine they can go a little hotter now but there's no need for them to do so i'm gonna get minus uh, i'm sorry i'm gonna get two to four db of gain reduction at the most out of the master compressor so as you can see, my levels are the same after I've added the compressor. So I'm not adding level again. I'm keeping things consistent. And that's the whole idea throughout. Anytime I put a plug-in in or EQ or anything, I'm going to compensate the output of that. So it comes in at minus 12 on the peak level and it goes out at minus 12 on the peak level. And that's a consistency from the beginning of the signal path through to the end that allows me to do a couple things. I can rearrange the order and I'm not going to mess with things. I can take something out completely and it's not going to make the level jump or drop. And every time I put a nonlinear device in, uh, compression, gating, saturation, distortion, I'm going to see the same basic input level to that device and I'll be able to set it up a lot quicker. I won't have to be changing a lot of settings from where they normally would be. So that speeds up the mixing process. So now let's add the, the biggie. This is where everything gets pumped up to the levels I'm looking for. And that's usually around a crest factor of 12 dB. That means that if the peaks are at zero, which they will be after they go through this guy, then the VU or the average level is going to be around minus 12. Maybe in certain places a little bit over, maybe a little bit under. In this case, it's a more organic track, so I'm not slamming it that hard. I will usually set my margin to a half a dB uh, if it's aggressive, if it's an acoustic track and I'm looking to keep it as clean as possible, I'll go down to a dB of, of margin. And I use inner sample limiting to keep things from uh, surprising me later on. So you'll need a little bit more on your threshold because our levels don't go above minus three so nothing will happen uh, with regards to limiting until I pass the minus three point. It'll get louder but I won't be actually limiting. I'm looking for two to six dB at the most or six LEDs of gain reduction and if it's doing six I only want it to hit every once in a while. So let's look at what we're getting here and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's one or two, three, and they're occasional. Oh, there was a big possible six. That looks like four or five. So that's all we're doing there. And over here you can see, yep, sure enough, my average level's around minus 12 and my peak level's at zero. So that's a crest factor of 12 dB on the mix. So you can see with them set at minus 12 on every channel, my mix is ending up without having to adjust anything uh, right where I want it. And everything's consistent from channel to channel. And then I add my mastering in, which is just simply ozone. And that's it.
Have a good day, guys, and thanks for watching. Now, go make some music.